City Mortgage is one of the most influential rap groups taking over the underground of New York for years now. They pioneered the aggressive screaming rap style for a new generation and have definitely earned their place in history by this point. However, there is one member of the group who isn't mentioned as much as the others, a more mysterious figure hiding behind the scene. No, I'm not talking about Righteous P, Sos Mula, or even NYC Al Kai. I'm referring to the group's in-house producer, Thrack, the man responsible for producing some of the morgue's biggest tracks with the likes of 33 Black Street and Skatehead. With the success of these two tracks, truly shows that he's an integral part of their movement, but in recent years it seems he hasn't been as involved, leading many fans to wonder what may have happened to him, as well as some less than savory rumors circulating through the fan base. Before we get into this, I'm not attempting to slander or defame Thrax, I'm just trying to give you a conscious look on both sides of the story, give you all the rumors and everything circulating around him, and just hopefully you can take what you can take from it, don't harass the guy, and without further ado, let's just get into it. Thrax was born Sammy Nahir in California, his exact date of birth and age, and even most of his upbringing are mostly unknown. The earliest information we have on Thrax is that he was heavily entwined with the skateboarding and BMX scene in his home city, being part of a group called South City Skate. Being heavily invested in the sport, he spent most of his younger years at skate parks, getting to know rappers and producers alike through meetups with his friends. Thrax got his start as a producer by posting beats on SoundCloud under the name Sam J. He was also able to get connected to a recording studio through a high school program he was part of called Brooklyn Recording Connections. This may also explain why he eventually moved to New York. None of the beats he created under the Sam J name really popped off at the time, being more basic trap beats. He knew if he wanted to make it big, he had to change it up. This is when he came up with the name Thrax, representing his more aggressive style of beats he would soon grow famous for. In 2017, he would release a three-song beat pack on SoundCloud called Dirty Thrax. This is the first tangible music we actually have to listen to, and unfortunately, two of the three beats that were on this pack were actually lost to history. Only one is still available, but you can hear that it's basically the same style he's running with nowadays. It's unknown how well this release did as it's actually been deleted off his official SoundCloud, but we could say that he's probably not proud of it if he was going to delete it like that. As time went on, Thrax found it harder and harder to find LA rappers to hop on his more aggressive beats. This is when he set his sights on New York's underground scene to find more fitting collaborators. He set his sights on one particular rap collective coming up in the New York underground known as Scum Squad. It's unclear which member Thrax originally connected with in the group, but we do know he created the beat for Zeta Zero, sending it to both Zillikami and 6 9 After the Scum Squad broke up, both both members would use this beat for separate songs, leading for some conflict to arise with Thrax caught in the middle. 6 ix track Zeta Zero was actually removed from YouTube after Thrax copyright striked it, as he intended the beat to be used for Zilla's track Yuck Mouth. It's safe to say that Thrax wasn't all that involved in the Scum Squad, as he only produced that one beat for them, and they either shelved it for a long time not using it, or he only sold it to them after they were broken up. Zeta Zero came out long after 6 9 and Zilla Kami already had their falling out, but by the removal of Zeta Zero from YouTube, it's clear to see that Thrax actually took Zilla's Thrax now would soon after call him and try to settle it, but it seems like Thrax would just plead ignorance and say that it wasn't his business to get in between the two friends. What well, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, bro. You sound like you chewing on peanut butter. I'm on the fucking subway right now. Alright, so so my my my. I sent it to both of you at the same time. I didn't sell it to anyone. Alright, but but that's what I'm saying. You send it to both of us at the same time, right? And 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 I told you and I told you I was gonna get on it first. Remember when you first sent it? I said send it to my yeah, email. Yeah, I can't fucking control it when someone already has it. I bet, but that's what I'm, I, I already I, told them. I already already was like you already filmed this video. Da da da. But whatever, put it out. I can't fucking control that shit. After this, 6 9 and Thrax never worked together again and Zeta Zero wasn't reinstated onto YouTube. After this, Zilla would stop rapping for a while, but when he did eventually come back to his craft, Thrax was there to join with him as well as Sos Mula to finally form the group known as City Moore. At the time, however, Thrax was actually working with another group known as GCSY, including members like Cameron Nazi and Subjects. Between these two groups, he was gaining a fairly stable living wage in New York for the coming years. From there on out, he was heavily involved with City Moore, Volume 1, Hell or High Water, producing the whole tape as as well as getting his name on the front of it. However, when it was time for the second volume to come out, he ended up only producing two songs for that project, followed by Electric Boogaloo, which was City Morgue's next project. He increased his number to three tracks. However, most fans didn't notice this until volume three would drop, Bottom of the Barrel, where Thrax once again ended up having two producing credits, leading many fans to wonder, what happened between the members of the Morgue? Some would speculate that it could have something to do with Thrax producing for Cameron Nazi, a former collaborator of Zillikami, who he later had a falling out with. Thrax would even state in a DM conversation with the fan that he couldn't work with Cameron anymore because he was signed with City Morgue. When Cameron was asked about this on Instagram, however, he responded saying he hasn't talked to Thrax in years. Honestly, no. I haven't spoken to him in about three, four years. No. 
pretty much confirming that it couldn't have been Cameron Ozzy who got between Zilla and Thrax. Eventually, fans got Zilla to speak on the topic on Instagram Live, where he'd explained that he mostly didn't work with Thrax because he preferred rapping on less aggressive beats and he wanted to branch out more. I don't use Thrax as much. I think it's because I'm having more success with... Remember, I like more, like, super... It's like... You know, I don't like heavy, heavy, heavy beats. I want to be the heavy one in the beat. Thrax's beats are so, like, fucking crazy. And, like, like they're, like, amazing. People would also ask Thrax his side of the story and why he wasn't working with the morgue so much anymore, and he explained he just wasn't working hard enough and he needed to get back tapped in with them again. So that's pretty much all the drama between them. As we know, at this point, the morgue is moving farther and farther apart, with Sosmula and Zilakami both moving on with their solo careers. Safe to say that Thrax is probably doing the same thing, and that would be all the drama surrounding his name if it wasn't for his clothing line that he created named Addicts. This is a clothing line that Thrax created completely independent of City Morgue. It's not to be confused with Missing Since Thursday, which is Scumbag Chad, clothing line that's mostly associated with City Morgue. This was Thrax's own thing. Despite that though, many City Morgue fans would become interested in the clothing and start to order it online. This is when accusations of Thrax scamming would start to appear as many of the orders weren't fulfilled on time. Many fans wouldn't receive their orders for months and they would get ghosted when they tried to ask about it. They never got their money back either and multiple claims of this would start to come up across the entire Zillikami subreddit. This would start to paint a very different picture of Thrax online, leading many fans to fight with him in DMs and he would tend to respond to them as well, even fighting with complete random knows when he was supposed to be at Rolling Loud. Though by no means am I going to call this conclusive evidence that he actually is a scammer, it definitely is happening a little too frequently to be a coincidence. I'm not sure if Thrax is intentionally scamming or he's just such a bad businessman that he doesn't know how to get his stuff out in time, but on top of that, some have even alleged that he's a beat scammer as well, not sending beats to those who pay him for a feature over Instagram. People will pay Thrax money, but he never ends up actually sending the beat to them and he never gives them their money back either. If that wasn't enough, there is one other well-known fact about Thrax that people like to bring up. Now, I'm not kink shaming, I'm not saying anything about it, I just think it's fair to point out as it's a well known fact about the guy. He might have a dog poop fetish. Many fans discovered his dog's Instagram page where he posts obsessively about dog shit. Pictures of dog shit, captions talking about dog shits, even threats that his dog's gonna shit on people he doesn't like. It does get a little weird. Now to be fair, this could be some childish potty humor, but I don't know, it does seem to happen a little too often to be that innocent. Either way, it's up to you to decide. Overall, Thrax may be a weird ass guy, but he sure makes some great beats, and as long as he continues to do that, I'll continue to listen. And he's even going to have one producing credit on the upcoming City Morgue album Album, so that would be cool to hear. And Thrax, if you do somehow manage to see this video, I hope you don't take it too hard. After all, you are the big war dog, and I hope you keep on shitting on them for years to come. Okay, enough of the dog shit jokes now. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a knife emoji in the comments below so I know that you did. And if you didn't know, I actually have a Discord server that I'm trying to promote a little bit more. So if you want to join into that, where we can talk about underground rappers, talk about City Morgan, all that type of stuff, then definitely join that. I'll leave the link in the bio below. And besides that, just thank you guys so much for watching talk to you next time bye oh yeah and one more thing shout out triple for helping me gather information on thrax he also made his own video on thrax a couple years ago as well as making some pretty cool beats so if you want to check out his channel i'll link it in the bio below as well thanks for helping me out shout out you bye again Cha-ching, it's no contest. There's only one thing that I love the best. From every side I've ever seen, to the sweetest sound I've heard, I'd gladly give up everything for all the money that I've earned. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-chingery. There's nothing on earth like the feeling of greed. There's nothing on earth like the feeling of greed. Please don't do that again.